company fundamentals, such as how much money the company is earning and how efficiently the company is utilizing its resources, drive stock and CFD prices. Stock and CFD traders typically want to buy companies that they believe are going to continue growing and they want to sell companies that they believe are going to stop growing. Learning a few basic fundamental concepts and what information professional traders are looking at will help you to know which way the market is most likely to move in the future. Traders tend to focus their attention on a few different fundamental numbers when they are evaluating a company. We'll start first with company earnings. Stock and CFD traders tend to begin their fundamental evaluations of companies by looking at how much money the company is making for each of its owners. After all, when you buy a share of stock, you become an owner of the company, so naturally you would be concerned with how much money the company is making for you. The fundamental piece of information that tells stock and CFD traders how much money the company earned for each owner is called Earnings Per Share, or EPS. To arrive at this number, traders look at the overall earnings for the company and divide that number by the number of stock shares the company has issued. If a company earns 1 billion pounds and has 1 billion shares outstanding, the company will have an EPS of 1 pound. Once stock and CFD traders identify a company's EPS, they then look at how much a stock costs compared to the earnings that are associated with each share of stock. The fundamental ratio that tells traders this information is the price to earnings ratio, or the PE ratio. The P-E ratio gives stock and CFD traders an idea of whether a stock is relatively expensive or inexpensive, which is crucial because traders looking to buy stocks and CFDs are looking for inexpensive stocks. For example, if a stock has an earnings per share or EPS of one pound and the stock is trading for 20 pounds, it has a P-E ratio of 20. Once stock and CFD traders have evaluated how much money a company is earning for its owners, they tend to move on to looking at how efficiently the company is utilizing its resources. Stocks in efficient companies tend to perform much better than stocks in inefficient companies because efficiency generally leads to greater profitability and more earnings flowing into the stock and CFD owners' pockets. To monitor how efficiently their assets are being utilized, stockholders make a comparison to shareholders' equity that is similar to the comparison they make with the price of the stock compared to the earnings of the company in the P-E ratio. The comparison they make is called the price-to-book ratio. Here's how it works. Suppose you have two piggy banks both selling for 100 pounds. However, both piggy banks are not the same. Inside the first piggy bank, you will find 100 pounds while inside the second piggy bank you will only find 10 pounds. Which piggy bank would you rather buy for 100 pounds? You would obviously want to buy the piggy bank with 100 pounds in it. Looking at a company's price to book ratio is a similar concept. To find a company's price to book ratio, you first have to determine the book value of the company. The book value of the company is equal to the shareholder's equity divided by the number of stock shares the company has issued. If a company has 5 billion pounds in assets and has 1 billion shares outstanding, the company has a book value of $5 per share. That is how much money is inside the piggy bank per share. Next, stock and CFD traders divide the current stock price by the book value to determine the price to book ratio. If the stock was trading at 20 pounds, it would have a price to book ratio of 4. Lastly, let's look at cash flow. Cash is a company's lifeblood. Regardless of how well a company is performing otherwise, if it runs out of money, it will cease to function. A company must have cash to pay its employees, its vendors, and its shareholders, whether it is paying the cash out as a dividend or keeping the cash in retained earnings to grow the company and increase the value of the stock. Traders are interested in how much cash a company can create, or a company's free cash flow. Free cash flow represents a company's true cash flow, or how much cash a company has available to invest in new initiatives or to pay to investors via dividends. To find a company's free cash flow, you find the company's net income, add its depreciation and amortization expenses back into that number, and then subtract the company's changes in working capital and capital expenditures from the balance. 
Traders also use a company's free cash flow data in a discounted cash flow analysis to determine if a company's stock is expensive or inexpensive compared to the cash the company is able to generate.